there, this is Sherry Hayes with TheMomDelights.com and today I'm going to talk to you about some really kind of essential things from my bookcase that I suggest for teaching early elementary and elementary grades and I hope you can glean some good stuff from it. I know I've been promising these videos forever. I love going over my books. I think we're really going to enjoy this. So I've pulled out a number of books from that bookshelf as you can see these are from different sets. Um, this is from the uh, My Book House set. You can still get these online. You can find them used, you know, the vintage sets. They're, they did a number of versions. And you can also buy reprints of these, uh, brand new. And you can get them for free download that you can print or read online yourself to your children. Here is the child craft books. Now I believe these were done in like the 50s so nothing is really in public domain but you can still find these in sets, vintage sets that you can buy on like eBay and places like that. This is the bookshelf for boys and girls. This set of books, you know each of these have multiple volumes. I just pulled out volume one and volume two of each because we're talking about early elementary type stages and ages. Um, you know, I don't go by grades, but I think that's how most of us think of those early, you know, early readers, pre-readers, that kind of thing. Um, this is Bookshelf for Boys and Girls. This, you can find, there was an ancient set. These are actually, I think they started to be published in 1912 by the University Society. And they, they originally they were called the Boys and Girls Bookshelf. And so you can find some of these online. The sets are really nice and they're colorful. Um, it's very hard to find downloads of the nursery rhymes and the folk and fairy tales. You can go to yesterday's classics and find a lot of these, um, a lot of uh, collections of nursery rhymes and um, folk and fairy tales that are good for the early pre-reading and early reading years. And also there are um, the uh, Treadwell Free uh, Reading Literature Series, and I'll try to put links. I have, I'll make a blog post and I'll put links to that in my blog post. But those are for when children are just learning to read and they want to read something other than just the canned stuff that, like, would be in these books, <laughs> which are the McGovey readers. But these are very important, very basic reading skills books that are amazing. I'll go with them in a, in a second, I'll explain these. But what I want to say is that it's good to re have the li reading literature city, blah, 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 the reading literature series, so that a child can practice reading actual stories, and we'll go into that in a little bit. So, first of all, we'll start with. Well, I wanted to start with these. So, let me get a comparison going. This is volume one of the bookshelf for boys and girls, and it says. <coughs> nursery favorites old and new and so what you'll find in here is and this is you know ours were well loved so we see here we have like these are tiny baby nurse uh, rhymes here excuse me so what you see here are the tiny baby you know like little baby um, little baby lay your head on your pretty cradle bed, you know, those kind of things for little tiny kids. So these are fun to read just with little tiny ones, just to get them used to sitting still and listen to mommy, and they're kind of sing-songish like lullabies um, that you can sing to little babies or read to them. Winkin' Blinkin' and Nod is here, that's a good one. And there are some little stories. Little Bear Takes His Nap. This is for tiny little ones. You know, we were talking about preschool. This is one of those stories that you could read to a tiny little person just before bed, just to get them to, used to listening to reading out loud. How they sleep. The Rockabye Lady. All these, is, aren't these precious? I don't know why they don't remake books like this. Kids love these books. Now, I know that, like, Osborne and some of them, they, 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 they have some of this stuff going on. But to have them all in one volume, so that you just take one book out and then you choose what you want to read. Now, as <clears throat> it goes on, here's some little games like uh, a farmer went a trotting right away. You know, where you stick the kid on your knee and you up and down. 
So little games you can play with them. And here we have, and this is it teaches you how to do this little thing with your kids. It's really cool. Mother Goose. Ah. Now it gets colorful and we're into the nursery rhymes, right? Oh my kids, look, see how worn these pages are. I don't know. <laughs> the <clears throat> you know, they kind of get torn and you have to tape them because kids love them so much. My little kids love these books over and over again. Nursery favorites. These are the, the, the Little Red Riding Hood. Um, the Gingerbread Boy. Here is the Three Bears. Now, why do we want these stories? Because these stories are simple and they have a lot, they have a good storyline that children understand and they have loads of repetition. If you think about the Three Little Bears, how about the house that Jack built. Here's repetition, repetition, repetition. You know, it helps little kids to organize language. Um, the gingerbread boy, definite repetition, isn't it? Ba -da -da -da. Let's see, what did it say? Run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. I've run away from the little old woman, and I can run away from you too. I can, I can. That was real, like, sassy, like that, you know. <laughs> kids love that. Little Red Riding Hood. There's lots of repetition in these. So the little kids get it in their heads how language works. The Three Little Kittens. Now, this is one version. And this is one version. See? It's even coming apart the binding. <laughs> that's one. The um, Now, that's volume two. We'll get to that in a minute. This is volume one of the Child Craft. And here we have a lot of the same, you know, Poems of early child. Oh no, that's the author. Sorry, oh, I'm jumping ahead. Let me show you. Okay, here we go. Nursery rhymes. Pat a cake. Ride a cock horse. Buy baby bunting. Peas porridge hot. Peas porridge cold. Jack be nimble. Jack be quick. Right. There you go. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. Like that. See one, two. Buckle my shoes. They're all in here. Isn't this beautiful? Look at those illustrations. Oh love these books. So anyway, they've got all these nursery rhymes and poems of early childhood and on and on and on. So this one is pretty much, of this book, is almost all poetry. Okay, so it's even got some Robert Louis Stevenson, some Rossetti, all that kind of stuff. And in this one, number one, this is almost all poetry as well. It's called In the Nursery. And a lot of the same things. Now, this is the one you can get the reprint. You can get. I'm. I'm going to link Rain Rainbow Resource in my blog post. You can buy this brand spanking new with all these neat little things. Um, and this doesn't just have Mother Goose. This has all kinds of poetry from all over the place. Three little kittens. We saw that one. Oh, but this is isn't it gorgeous? Look at those illustrations. Look at that. Don't you just love it? I mean, who needs a library when you? These books, you just read these books. Oh, they're so a tisket, a tasket, green and yellow basket. Like that. So that's number one of that. Now, then when we go into number two of my book house, and now we're saying story time. So now we're getting into, you know, the stories. The rooster and the sultan. Oh, that. Let's see, there's some poetry in here too. Let's see. Um,. There's all kinds of neat stories. Uh, Billing the Cat. You know that one. Um, Old Shut Eyes the Sandman. That's interesting. Oh, that one is. Uh, let's see. But look at these. Look at these illustrations. This is another one you can get. Uh, you can get. Oh, here we go. The Little Red Hen and the Grain of Wheat. Oh, yes. Right here. Not I, said the duck. Not I, said the mouse. Not I, said the pig. Beautiful, beautiful book. Now here's number two in the child craft. And okay, so there's more poetry. Oh wait a minute, is this all poetry too? I think there are stories in here. Come on, there's gotta be stories. If it's not in this one, it's the next one, number three in the child craft. There are actual stories. Oh, I know I let's see. Yep, because it's all poetry. Pretty cool though. Really long poetry, but poetry is poems. <laughs> Anyway, so I guess number three, this is, says storytelling and other poems. So there's stories in here. Oh, oh, yes, I guess there's story poems like the Pied Piper of Hamelin. That's a story poem, isn't it? Okay, well, in this one, 
This has in it all kinds of stories. Yes, this is called Happy Hours in Storyland. Oh, yes, let's look at the contents page. This has fables, like Aesop's fables. Let's see, it has animal stories, poems for pleasure, time for laughter, children in America, then and now. Um, Aesop's and other fables, cheerful tales and verse. So, hap the happy cure of the cats at sea, cam on the pig, all oh, other fables. Okay. Time for laughter, animals, let's see, poems for pleasure. I know that they have like the basic. If it's not in this one, <clears throat> it's in the next one. They have all the stories about Cinderella and all that. I think that's in the next one. So that would be in volume three of this one as well. But I just wanted to give you a flavor for these. These are kind of where it's at. If you want to have, like, this right here, all of these, not just in these volumes, but in the other ones, these are the stories that little kids really crave and relate to and they just build this beautiful foundation I think it's something that Charlotte Mason would really appreciate um, in case you don't know who she is you need to look her up a great educator and influencer of homeschoolers so anyway yeah this right here these are excellent now I wanted to move over here to these McGuffey readers because for early childhood this is important I have lots of videos on these I just want to let you know and all kinds of stuff on my blog I actually made books to go with these but anyway so we'll go over them here just in case you're not familiar <clears throat> I know that I wasn't I didn't even know they existed but I'm so glad I found out about them about 13 years ago or so anyway so this is I've been homeschooling for 33 years but anyway officially anyway this is the eclectic primer this is the very first very simple just the alphabet some basic words and stuff like that but um, <clears throat> this, you kind of familiarize your kids with, with reading. Uh, I don't, I've never taught my, my children actually to read with this book, but I've got them familiar with the, with the ideas about reading. Yeah. You know, it has old, these are, these illustrations are done with wood cuts. We think of engravings, they're metal plates. These were done with wood plates, can you believe it? That's why they're kind of, you know, archaic looking. But they have their own charm, you know. Anyway, so that's the first one. I kind of diddle-daddle with that one. But I get really serious when I get to the Pictorial Eclectic Primer. I get kind of serious now. And, by the way, in these old books, whenever it says spelling, that's what we call sounding out. So, when they said make sure you're spelling, they wanted the, the children to practice sounding this out. You know how you put I, S, I, say it slow is say it fast is right so you do that with this and the lessons are short and sweet and to the point there's lesson one in there they're sounding out and then reading sounding out and reading right lesson two it says let the child spell each word in the line then read as in lesson one so even though they don't say spell and read that's what they want them to do and what's really cool about these lessons is they're very gradual and they're very rep, 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 repetitive. <laughs> yeah, so they repeat. <laughs> they repeat the same concepts, same words over and over and over. You know, this this really works even for those that have trouble reading, that have like dyslexia. If you stay with, I have a reading program that emphasizes the phonics rules, and if you stay with this, you know, the kids can learn. This is just so slow and gradual and can be so sweet. It doesn't have to be have hurried up. It doesn't have to be stressful. You know, you just keep moving slow and steady through this book. And I've got to tell you, it's almost imperceptible, the progress that your child makes if they go through this book and then the first reader, which um, I kind of review some of the in the primer. I'll show you that kind of review some at the very beginning and it just continues on it's a very gradual very logical progression you know you have words lists and then you have the lesson to read very fun and you can go through these lists and you can help them find you know some things that are similar talk about you know the different blends and uh, like oak and mt, right you know all those kinds of things 
And, you know, show, Ben is E-E, -E, so we normally say that E, but we don't say Bean. We say Ben for some reason. And then say, isn't that silly? <laughs> Which it is. Here's a double L at the end. You know, here, here's your. Say, that's you with an R on the end. Your, right? But yet, poor and your, see, they're different. Just go take these words and just look at all the differences and the similarities and just talk about them. So anyway, so that's that. And if you look on my lesson book things, you'll find all kinds of ways that I I have a lesson book. I have a free pages. I have free pages you can use with these. These, I think you can get the whole set of these with the grammar for like 100, 110 bucks. It used to be anyway. But think about it. You can use it through lots of kids. They're non-consumable. Uh, so they last and last. So, I mean, if you think about, like, a couple textbooks these days cost $100, right? But these will last. And this is the second reader. This right here, if your child, I mean, this will last a couple of years. Oh, one thing, too, yeah. So these books are not graded, like, first, second, third grade. It's like when your child, they, I mean, it used to be that they considered that as soon as your child finished this book, then they would move on to, and it would, they were known by where they were in the primers, right? So these are, these are our, this is our primer group, this is our first reader group, and this is our second reader group. Now that's not first, second, and third grade. <laughs> not by any stretch of the imagination. This one right here will last at least two years, right here, this book. And um, it goes, I think, from like high, like high first or second to third, maybe almost fourth grade. Just showing you. So yeah, so if your children are reading these, then the Margaret Treadwell Harriet Free, I think is Harriet Treadwell Margaret Free. I think this is there. Anyway, the reading literature series is what also you want to get. I actually have the first one in that one, but I don't have it with me right now. Or do I? Just a second. That's. Let me flip over here and see. This is my downstairs office. I think I might have it in this little bookshelf. Yes, I do. Let me show it to you. Right there. I printed this little baby out myself. And I colored it made it all nice. But let me show you the neat thing about this. You know, everybody wants... Children want to read real stories. They don't want to read dumbed down, stupid stuff in textbooks, you know. So anyway, this is really good to help them, and there's lots of really interesting things in there. There's very charming, but it's always fun to have something really real to read. Well, these stories, and these are some cards I made to go with it, are real stories. These are real stories. Yes. Let me take this off. This is a, the little red hen, and um, so they're familiar with the story, first of all. Our children already knew the story of the little red hen. Okay, so, but this time they're going to read it themselves. I think my little girls colored this one. <laughs> the little red hen found a seed. It was a little seed. The little red hen found a seed. It was a wheat seed. You see the repetition here? They're used to the repetition, but they know the story. The little red hen found a seed. It was a wheat seed. The little red hen said, who will plant the seed? And now you have more repetition. So really, the vocabulary for this first story is very, very small. This entire story can be read with like maybe 30, maybe 20, 30 um, words. But lots of them are words that they already know because they're, you know, the. Right? <laughs> um, and little and red and hen, see? And here's a bread probably is the, one of the biggest words in this whole thing besides little. Okay, so that's why, and then, and then the next story is the gingerbread boy. Okay, what kid doesn't like that story? Right? And here's another one that has really small vocabulary, but it tells a real story. You know, kids love that stuff. So then this is the old woman. Let's see. The old woman and, her, and the pig. Now that's got a lot of repetition. It doesn't need very much vocabulary. And actually, in the back, let's see if I have it printed out. But in the back of these books, they would have an actual vocabulary list. Let's see if I can find that. Yeah. So here's a vocab here's for the little red hen. Here are all the words in that story. And that's why I have these cards that I made. So that we could go over the the words in the story and then we'd read the story. So when they came to a word, I would say, you know, remember it's on the cards and we could practice reading that because these are very familiar words that we find a lot in reading. 
So you see it's like a win-win. So that's why I suggest these. Now you can get these pre-printed from yesterday's classics. And you can also get them on Google Books 100%. I've seen them there. I got this right here from, um, oh, was it? Yesterday's class. No, it was Yesterday's Classics. Anyway, it's it's a Charlotte Mason company. I'll have to remember it. I don't, I don't know why I don't remember it. Anyway, so I printed it. They had re, re, redone it a little bit. So I printed it from them, but you can get it off of Google Books and do it just as well. So anyway, that's a lowdown. Now, of course, there are some modern books you want to add into this, but I'm telling you, you really don't need that much. I mean, if you have one of these sets, or if you get the the ones that are that are pre that are reprinted from Rainbow Resource, you would have a lot of what you would need. Like I said, uh, the My Book House, the uh, nursery, and the story time one, you can get those, right? You can get these on eBay or whatever for really pretty cheaply. I mean, if you consider you're getting a whole set and there's lots of stuff to use in there. Uh, the McGuffey's, like I said, they're not that expensive. You can, uh, the, the Revive set, there's a, see, these are brown. There's a Revive set that's kind of blue and red. And you find those all over the place too. And those are another set you can use, although I like these better for the younger set because they're like more gradual and um, they have more repetition. They just seem to flow better for kids who are just coming up to read. Um, so I do the brown ones first, and then about after the second reader, then I flip over to the revised for the third, just like that. But anyway, these and these, right? Like I said, you can get these on yesterday's uh, classics, and there's another place I can't remember. I don't know why. But anyway, yesterday's classics are on Google books and uh, you can get all this stuff. I mean, so we're, what we're talking about here is early elementary that won't break your bank. And if you use my free pages or if you decide I have them ch uh, priced really cheaply, my lesson books that you can use with these, or you can use it with this, or you could use it with this, whatever you want to use it with. You can, they're very adaptable um, and they're very cheap. So this is a really cheap way to go for early elementary language arts. And these books right here even have some history and stuff with them which is terrific, right? So they have, like, these, the history stories in these are for littler kids, like second, third, fourth grade. And then the ones in here and the ones in here are a little older, but I like to read them aloud, you know, and we'll talk about them and we'll talk about where they fit in time and everything. It's just a really great way to familiarize yourself. The one, the history stories in these are for older kids, like, like fifth, sixth grade, like fourth, fifth, sixth grade are the ones in here and they can read them themselves and they go all the way from Leif, you know, American history from Leif Erikson on. They have all kinds of, and even world history figures. They, they, they do it mostly like by biography, which is really a lot of fun. So they even have Marco Polo and everything. Anyway, everything's included. I mean, I have used these books. They even have art and music in these. <laughs> no, sorry. In these ones and these ones, they have art and music. So that's amazing. And they have science too. These ones are almost all literature, but they're still fine. So I hope that gives you lots of stuff to do. I mean, there are all kinds of sets. There's even some other sets that I don't have here that you could include um, in that whole thing. But um, the early grades, I mean, they're a lot of fun. But they're, if you stick to the basics, you could have a lot of fun with your kids. And, you know, you'll start you know, start getting all happy, too, because it will help you with remembering when you were a child. And that will make it even more fun. So... I hope this blesses you. This is Mom Delights, Sherry Hayes, shining off. Please like and subscribe. And thank you for all your wonderful comments. I love each one. Bye-bye.